All right. Welcome to episode 48 of the Whiskey and White Tails podcast. Today is November 22nd. I am Gus. I'm Matt. And I already said this is the Whiskey and White Tails podcast, but this is the Whiskey and White Tails podcast. That it is. You're home for delicious whiskey, the world's okayest whitetail hunters, and the most Googled whitetail tips we can find for you. Yeah. <laughs> and we're on one today. Yeah, we got a lot of stuff to talk about today. A lot. Like what? A lot of giveaways, a lot of different things, a lot of, a lot of stuff. We're getting back in that whitetail topic again that we talked about last week because we got some new information <laughs> that I think will be fun for everyone. But before we get started, we would like to thank our sponsors. I'm going to start with Gut Monkeys. Mm -hmm. So we went to that sniper comp, and I was at Snipers Unknown. And I, the, like the tripod thing, I've always been like, that's like one of people, you know, right? be a man and shoulder it. Like that be a man guy. And, right, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Then I watched these guys use it. Like, no shame. They're just they just part of their kit. It's a tool, man. And so I, I reached out to Gun Monkeys, and they are getting me one. I'm using it. I'm going to use code whiskey to yeah. save some money on it. Cool. But, yeah, so you could do the same. If you want to try out this tripod thing, Tools Gun Monkeys. Do you remember when those shirts were real popular, and it would be like a shirt, and it would have a bunch of random things, and it would be like tools of the trade? Yeah, yeah. It's just a tool of the trade. Tool man. of the trade. So I'm going to get one. And I'll try and figure out a way to mount it to my, um, that really crappy stand, that really small stand that we put up. <laughs> I was trying to figure out a way to mount it up there so I can get longer range shots. Because I looked down through there and I need, yeah. I need to actually move one tree over. There was a cut there that's probably yeah, there used to 20 be a, yards wide. There used to be a road that ran through that spot. Dude, I could see 200 yards in through there. Yeah. So I think I might move the stand and get that tripod deal set up. Okay. That's yeah. good. You're talking about the one on the rifle side, not the one you yeah, on the rifle side. rigged on the bow side? No, 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 the rifle side. The one that we, the last kept, one we put if up. If you kept rigging stuff and adding stuff to the one on the bow side, that would eventually be like a museum-worthy deer stand. Dude, it's it's never coming down. Uh, yeah, no, it's not. There's no <laughs> way. It's, I'm not even, I don't even know how you got it up there. It's a climber. We got I don't know how I got it up we there. We got to take a picture or video it and do like a, an entire video episode. On how to not do a tree stand? Just... Yeah, sure. This is the difference between having kids and not having kids. <laughs> where I'm exactly like, man, eh, whatever. Right. It's no big deal. If I die, my wife gets rich. But they, they, that was dark. The I also got a lot of comments on my wife not having kids. That came out wrong. It's not what I meant, but you know what I meant. <laughs> I do. The, uh, the, yeah, it's a climber that I ratchet strapped a yeah, just permanently climbing stick it. up there. And then I climbed up it and then pulled the climber up the bottom. And then I ratchet strapped the climber to the tree and then stood in the climber and then ratchet strapped the seat to the tree. Right. And then I ratchet strapped the camera arm and right. some other and, and, and the reason was because the, the – we're getting way off on a tangent. Already. Yeah, already. We just got here. The, the climbers, you and I both had one. They're like 35 or 40 pound are, yeah. climbers from Field and Stream that we bought. Like in the 50s. Yeah, it seems like it. Well, we bought them like on a spur of moment because we needed them for a hunt and neither of us had a climber. They serve their purpose, and you found a way to repurpose yeah. it. Anyways, Gun Monkey Army. Yeah. Use code whiskey. Use code whiskey. And speaking of whitetails. Speaking of whitetails, uh, I have been doing and starting some Christmas shopping, and the one thing that I have learned as I've gotten older is that people appreciate certain things as you get older more than you do when you were younger. One of those things being photography and art. Sure. Uh, our friend Dom Gatto at domgattophoto.com has some great whitetail and wildlife photography. If you have not seen his Instagram and seen some of these cool shots and video he got when he was in Georgia, dude. Wild. And I know that he, like this is just some of the first things that he's releasing. Yeah, I'm sure there are some... He sent me some, a couple, and he was like, you some will money. see these in magazines. Yeah, I was that's like, so mm -hmm. cool, man. Yeah, that's nice. exciting. Because um, we've been you know like talking with him and um, just sort of... We've had several, a couple of podcasts with him. I think we're talking about doing another one with him here in a week or two. And he's just very talented. It's cool to watch him grow. And, and We're going as guests on his podcast. Yeah, that's right. That's so, right. Uh, yeah, so check out domgottophoto.com. You can use code whiskey to save some uh, some money as well. And, yep. you know, maybe consider that for your 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 favorite hunter if you're looking for some gift ideas because yep. I've got some uh, some wall space in my house that I want to add some more, more art to, some more photography to. We also wanted to go through some of these that are not sponsors, but we just know it's Christmas time. Good folks, good companies that we like to yeah. support. So you can also save some money with these guys. So one is Small Batch Cigar, which we have now we have cigar reviews. We also had from beginning to end to how to get into cigars, what you're looking for, just tips and tricks all done by Trevor. Um, and we tag him and stuff all the time. It's easy to see it. But if you go to our website, go to our blog, 
you can go in there and read that stuff. And he's secured us a deal with Small Batch Cigar that you get 10% off using code whiskey. You can also buy our Whiskey and Whitetail starter pack. And then there's an explanation with the starter pack on our site. So if you want to get into cigars, it's a good way to do it. River Brothers, wearing a hoodie, you get 20% off with code whiskey. I believe it's 20% off. Pretty sure. And then Snoot Glass, they sent us some metal tumblers. We've been beating the hell out of them. They're pretty beat up now, but they still work perfectly, but they're great for golf. I just took them golfing. Yeah, I saw that. And I've had a couple people reach out and ask us about the the code for that. So the code is WWT20. So Whiskey Whitetail is WWT20, and you get 20% off. They're also sending us – they have a new crystal glass coming out, and we're hoping that it fits our smoker kits. Oh, so that would be a nice little uh, – Could be a collab in the future. Awesome. But check them out cool. as well. We'd also like to uh, thank Ford for sponsoring us with their F450 Western Hauler as yes. our, our new company vehicles. Um, Appreciate it. Those it, alligator seats are yeah, money. You, you may see us driving those around in 20 years or so when they get them to us. But we just wanted to say thanks in advance. Yeah, thank you, Ford. We appreciate it. The F450 is a big boy. I feel like if you put it into the universe, yeah, it happens. It'll it'll come back. And just like in the show, you better not get on my alligator seats dirty. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're Cayman. Cayman? Yeah, it's yeah. wild. Anyways, uh, go check that out if you don't know what that is. Yeah. All right. did, I didn't either. What's up? It's sick. So let's yeah. start the show. Let's do it. Veterans Day. We missed saying it to all the veterans, which you, I typically rarely think about it being one. I don't like being thanked, but thank you to all our veterans for Veterans Day, and thank you to all the veterans that came out to Cigars on Maybank for the final piece of our Simply Stogies cigar veteran giveaway yeah. progress. They sent so much stuff, it's taken us months to get rid of them all. Yeah, we had to do several events and attend yeah. several things to get rid of them. So that video is coming soon, but we raised a little over $400 for When the Life Sucks, the WLS Foundation. I picked that up Tuesday. I'll be mailing it out cool. shortly. So thanks everybody that came for that. We said the reviews. We also have duck calls coming out. They're made from Buffalo Trace barrels, the lids, which we can't advertise that, but that's what they're made from. This week, we have the Jasper Market, downtown Charleston. If you're in the area, 12 to 2, there'll be yep. a bunch of vendors there. There's also going to be a cigar truck that'll be there, cool. the Airstring. Oh, yeah. So they'll be there, and that'll be fun to have a cigar. We'll probably have some whiskey hiding behind the uh, thing. Yeah. If you come, I don't think I you're may have to come. I may have to come just to check it out. I, I thought that I was going to be super busy, but some plans changed. Um, I still have some things to do that morning, but I may I may swing by because I got to come down this way anyways to meet up and because I'm working the night market from 6.30 to 10.30, so I got to get all the stuff anyways. Uh, we did it again. This episode comes out after. Oh, man, we got to stop doing that. Yeah, sorry. We should have told you all last episode. We got to get better at that. Sorry, guys. Yeah, my bad. Well, it's already done, but. It went good, probably. <laughs> yes, I'm sure it did. I'm sure it was a lot of fun. And then you worked the market that, that night. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I worked the market Sunday, and it was also. Saturday. Saturday was also great. Yeah, I had a good time and made all, paid all our bills. All right, so we have something new that we're going to do. We were doing, we got tired of popping bottles, mainly because it got expensive, but then I, there just wasn't a lot out there I could find that I wanted that we didn't already have or have already done. Yep. So we started doing just random, I put, poured a bunch of random bottles, which now seems to have gone to waste. Maybe that's something we'll pick up in 2022. Don't know. But for the remainder of 2021, we have how many episodes? Counting it's like this one? seven, six seven. or seven left. So we're going to do two per episode. And we don't know where they are. They're blind. But what we did was we took all of the whiskey that we have that we either don't like or uh, don't want to drink it again or people around us have given it to us because they didn't like it. And then we also didn't like it. It's, it's basically stuff we don't like. So... We're not doing this to upset anyone. We're doing it to uh, let you know what we don't like. And taste is subjective. So you, this could be, I actually know one of them is, because I saw the bottles, but they're all blind. We don't know what we're drinking. But I one saw, of them was going to hurt some feelings. I saw one of the bottles, and, I, and we know someone personally <laughs> that sends us bottles that that is his favorite thing. So Oh, really? Yeah, Kyle. That's Kyle's favorite chip. Favorite oh, I did not know that. Yeah. But I don't, I don't know which number it is, but we're going to basically, we'll take two per episode. Yeah. And we're going to start with just, I don't know. You know what I think is also I'll part of the one, problem with some of them is that I think it's I think they get 
really hyped up. Yeah. And then we get a chance to try it, and it's just not what we what it was hyped up to be. No. I'm going to go in the middle here and pick whatever I'm this gonna is. I'm going to take this one. On oh, outside. Number one. You got number one. Nice. I got number eight. Are we going to each drink the same yeah, we'd first? Drink, okay. Yeah. Well, I guess I need I need another glass. You pour, I'll grab another glass. I want a side by side. Which one of these is the worst? And so it's not really a fair competition here because what we're going to do is hey, a whiskey might glass. Yeah, cool. I, was, I don't know where there's those some, all are. I'm still trying to consolidate. There's like six of them in one of the totes out there. Is there? Yeah. I'll pull them out. We'll pull them out. Yeah, we quit selling those because we're running out of them. And that's stupid. We were selling these and now we're going to stop selling them because we don't want to sell them. I mean, I guess. <laughs> so there's no profit margin. Let's talk nah, business. We're talking time. business. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's a waste of time. All right. So on the this side, so I'm gonna put this right in the middle. So okay. number eight on this side, and I just want to see which one of these we like the most, and which one of these we like the least. And the one that we like the least goes in the worst whiskey of 2021 category. And again, this is. Our palate of the of the things that we have on hand. Yep. I'm sure if we go oh. grabbing some bottom shelf stuff, or w- there's much worse. But All of these brands you've seen us post a picture of, or many people have posted pictures of. This isn't none of this is like plastic bottle junk. This is all stuff people like, people drink, just things that we don't like. Yep. I was trying to clean out the bar, and I just have too many open <laughs> bottles. Let's and be I was like, let's get rid of the ones I don't like. So basically, what we're gonna do is. This entire thing, once we're done with this thing, what's left in those bottles is going to either we'll just give it to somebody locally because we can't sell alcohol or ship it. Or just have a big party and make a lot of cocktails with it. Yeah, we could do that. I'm down with making cocktails. Yeah, we have free cocktail Holidays party. are coming. You know. So number one and number eight. What do you want to start with? Uh, I mean, I don't guess it matters. Just I'll, I'll do number one. Smells fine. Oh, I just really like these now. <laughs> that's that's we've what written them off happen. throughout the years. Now they've been opened, and our palate's changed a little bit. <sighs> nah, I don't like this one. It's very, um, very floral, like perfume. Yeah, Ugh. I feel like it burns more than it should do. I'm all right, burns. It burns. Floral. <laughs> it smells okay. Sometimes you get stuff that's floral in a good way, but this is like chewing on flower petals almost. Yeah. I don't like it. Like it perfume. Like potpourri. Per- potpourri. I don't know how to spell that. Poop. It's like potpourri or something. I don't know. Poop. Pour. E. Come on with the, with the. Yeah. Tell us how it's spelled. The mean comments and. I can't believe you don't know how to spell potpourri. Potpourri. Or, Not French. Or, who John McClane was. <laughs> That one did. Yeah. Got some comments on that one. <laughs> oh, that was one way I wanted to start this episode was uh, let's go through all of our take backs from last episode. Anything we said last episode that we take back? That's right. None. We don't take anything back. Okay. No corrections. Ever? No, just the last episode. Uh, I, don't, I don't remember much from the last episode. Not that I just... I just we we did like a half COVID rant. Oh, did we? Yeah. yeah. Definitely don't take any of that back. And no one corrected us on it either. The only thing I was correct, the number one comment thing I got was the what people want to know more about the whitetail thing and the whitetail COVID thing, which we're going to do. Yeah. And then the other one was the wife. Yeah. Oh. People don't get, maybe nobody I know listens to the podcast. I don't get any comments about the podcast from people I know. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Uh-huh. I don't know either. Maybe you're not selling the company better enough to your friends. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, I'm not either. I did for a little while, but then I stopped. Okay. Look, which giveaway do we want to do first? The Patreon only or the – let's do the giveaway. Let's do the not, let's let's do the Patreon only last. Okay. Because that one's pretty cool, and I want people to be jelly about it. Yeah, that was <clears> a cool one. All right, so this giveaway, everyone can enter. We're going to do it on YouTube. So it'll be – once the video comes out, it'll be like in the first 30 seconds, we'll tell you how to win it. So that's where the hit the bell thing comes out so you know when we post. So the first giveaway, it, we're going to do a cocktail kit. This is a fun story. So I ordered one from the company I reached out to to get it. Mm-hmm. This company. As to which – man, this is going to be really loud on this table. As to which they sent me this problem child here. 
Yeah, that's fine. I have the same bag. Where it clips in, right? It's clipped in. Oh, that's not the same. And then it comes right off. Mine does not do that. It doesn't clip in? Oh, you have the... uh, Mine buckles just fine. Yeah. This one does not. So I replied and was like, hey, this is messed up, and I plan to give it away. So if you want me to give away a broken bag, then... To represent your company. Yeah. Then, you know, we're good. So they replied and said, sorry, send us proof of purchase, to which I sent them the receipt from Amazon, which was like 120 or $130, something like that. Yeah. They sent me a whole new one. So I have two of these now. Nice. And I actually know how to fix this. I can see that it's bent some. So oh, I'm just going to bend it is? back. We'll see. We'll see. If not, then you'll have to figure it out. But, yeah. So inside this cocktail kit, we are also going to throw in a whiskey and whitetail smoking block with torch, which I don't have the torch in here because I just don't need to. So in the zipper pouch, you have a very nice copper cocktail shaker as well as... Whoa, this one comes with way more than... Um, there's a lot of stuff in here. That's why I said is that like a shillelagh? I don't know that word. This is where you put fruit in it, and then you squeeze the fruit. Yeah, I know, but it's big and sturdy. looks like a shillelagh. It's that, that Irish stick weapon. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It comes with... Oh, man, this is legit legit. Yeah. comes with balls, spouts, pour things. I'm not going to pull it all out. It's got a cocktail mixer spoon. It's got the... Uh, scraper. I almost said... A worm that rhymes with scraper. Scraper for fruit, so you can scrape the the uh, the, the, pe- the, the, the rind. The peel, the rind. Yeah, the rind. Um, it has a strainer for the mixer. It also has a cocktail spoon, slotted spoon for pouring it in. Mm-hmm. It has an actual strainer for anything that needs to be strained. It has tongs. It's got a jigger with both one and three What's quarter, I think, and one ounce. One and three quarter looks huge. And it has a bottle opener. Bottle opener. It's also got a wine cork and it and has a baseball bat. Baseball bat. <laughs> and it comes with a bag, an ice bag, which I don't have, but basically you put the ice in the oh, bag. That's for crushing ice. And then you to get really fine crushed. I actually ice. thought it was a muddler. I was like, that's a really big muddler. It could also be a muddler. <laughs> it can double as a muddler on this side. Oh yes, I guess it could, couldn't it? Yep. Very cool kit. So it's it's a bunch of stuff. It's a good kit. So we're gonna give away two of these instead of three. And the only way you'll get injured is you have to watch the YouTube videos yeah, and listen for the instructions. So the one's coming out after this. And what are the – so w- the instructions are going to change? I have no idea yet. We haven't decided? Okay. Just watch the videos. We might be like uh, – First to – Yeah, what is this thing called? Here's the question. First one to email info at whiskeyandwhitetails.com. Yeah. With the answer to the question, you win. Cool. All right. Fair so enough. that's that giveaway. Or, or first to comment on the, the video because it should be timestamped, I think – could or do should that. put them in order. We'll do that reception. first to comment. Let's yep. test that and double check that it does show us who, what time and who did it first. That way yep. there's, there's proof right and it drives some engagement on the videos. Good point. Timestamp or comments. I don't know if it goes down to the second, but I know that it does have, but I'll get, I, I have notifications um, first turned on get, you can just, like in the YouTube studio. So yeah. Yeah. yeah that's that's which we'll one comes in order. Yep. First one to comment wins. So that's how we're going to do it. All right. Let's drink this number two, number eight. Number two, second, second pour, number eight. I'm already going to like this one more, I think. That's a hint of cinnamon. Yeah, it does. A lot of cinnamon. I remember, no, I remember drinking a whiskey one time and it had that, like, that smell. You know how when they tell you that your breath stinks, not me, just... You, you, someone says it. You can lick your hand, let it dry out, and then smell your hand, and that's what your breath smells like. So you know when you get like that acetony keto breath. Mm-hmm. This has that. I was gonna say it reminds me of uh, when you use Listerine and then you spit. Yeah, the taste that kind of Listerine taste that lingers, almost a spearmint or whatever. Yeah, it's but, like an but, acetone, but al- very yeah. alcohol ethanol. Not a bad smell. It's just it reminds me of mouth smell. Yeah, you know how mouth. You know how mouth smell. <laughs> Show me what that. Mouth do? Mouth smell like. <laughs> or do. That's a big boy song if you haven't heard it. Right? It was big boy. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good song. So I definitely like eight better, but I still don't like it. Cinnamon. We discussed a Listerine deal. Medium heat. Do you, when do we need to? Uh... Any second. Once we finish tasting. Actually, let's do the reveal then. then. Right, so I think we both like 
number eight here yeah. more than the first one. But we're going to continue to drink both of them. Yeah. To get my Andy Andy notebook. Because we ain't no quitters. Nope. Well, maybe. There's been a couple we've quit on, but they were just so bad. <coughs> they might be in this group. Excuse me. Number know. eight, I am surprised because I definitely didn't like it. So this one opened up. Number eight is Pure Kentucky. Interesting. <laughs> and number one, funny enough, is the one we talked about in the beginning of this episode. I knew I knew it was going to be. Number one, Will It Pot Still. Number eight, Pure Kentucky. So for this battle, uh, Will It Pot Still goes in the batch of Undesirable, and then Pure Kentucky goes back on the shelf. So Will It Pot Still was the worst whiskey of our ten worst whiskeys of this episode. And then once we get through the pairings, then we'll pair them back up again. So we'll see where this goes. Can't wait. So you can put that back over there. Well, there you have it. Sorry, Kyle. You lost this episode. But you won last episode. Or maybe two episodes. That no, was a different video. Yeah. Okay. So now we're going to talk about the Patreon giveaway. And then we will get into... Some of the topics. All right, so Patreon giveaway. We're not going to go into depth on this because it is a experimental event. It is the development of something a that's, vision. Something that's coming. So in order to know how to do this, something that's coming, we're going to do a trial run. So what this will get you is a probably not first-class ticket. <laughs> we'll see. We'll look at prices. We'll see. We'll talk to our pilot friend. He hasn't – so the plane deal fell through. He hasn't been able to buy a plane yet. Tell him to get on it. But it would be cheaper to fly them than to pay him. Yeah, to I'm sure it would. <laughs> but but if, it, if they live somewhere cool that we want to go visit, maybe we fly up in the morning, spend the day, and then fly back. Yeah, and then that would be kind of cool. We can write it all off. All right. So we are flying you to Charleston, South Carolina. You will fly in at Charleston, Charleston Airport. I or Gus will come pick you up at the airport and then take you to an undisclosed location – in which we will have a lot of fun. It'll be... <laughs> Sounds so sketchy. Yeah. I'm going to put a bag over your head. We're going to drive to an undisclosed location. We're going to make you wear your headphones with rock music and a All light inside the bag. All kinds of sensory deprivation. Yeah. No, you will be able to look around freely. But you'll be going... We'll give you all the information, obviously, if you win. But that's what's going on. It's an event with us, just us, and then two of our local friends that are just going to help us get it going but that's what it is it's a giveaway you will pay for nothing we will pay for all food flight lodging yep everything so we are doing that event we didn't write the date down I january it was the 29th maybe not january 29th yes so we will probably fly you in the morning of the 29th and then fly you out the morning of the 30th that way you were home in time for years. That's right. Or February. February February, February 1st, 1st. New Year's. New Februaries. So, if you're interested in doing that, that is available to all tiers on Patreon. We will be doing the drawing soon because we got to make plans. So, probably a month in advance. So, I would say right before Christmas, we will do this That's drawing. That's a good time to do it, yeah. So, you have so it's like tw 25 days. Yeah. If you're a Patreon member. If you're not... Yeah, you got to be a Patreon member. Not, there's nobody else is getting this for for three bucks. Yeah, for three dollars. For three dollars, you, you could get a weekend. Basically, basically get away. <laughs> yeah, we promise you'll get drunk. We promise you'll have a good time. You're gonna hear some good music, some good food. Yeah, excellent food. It's gonna be fun, and it's gonna be. And I, the, my only request is like, if you're scared of being outside, don't. Uh, you don't want to come. Granted, it's the winter. There won't be any bugs, but or snakes or snakes. No, none of that'll be an issue. <laughs> Not going to be an issue, but it will be a fun time. For free. For free. Think about it. Try it out. Yeah. Think about it. It's up to you. All right. So that will be the giveaway that we're doing. Private giveaway. Patreon only. But you're welcome to, yeah. And so with that, I wanted to say that we're on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. You can use code podcast at our website to get 20% off everything that we sell. Everything. Our line. And now... That is all I wrote down except for the whitetail stuff that I want to get into. Mm -hmm. Did you have anything? I had one thing to follow up on. Let's do uh, it. We talked about the rut, you know, like strategies. Um, 
And one of them we talked about was, <laughs> it's, it's pretty bad, uh, just getting in the woods, right? Like this time of year, sometimes you don't have all the time and to do all the scouting and the yada, yada, yada. But just getting in the woods this time of year is, yeah. is half the battle. And I did that very thing and managed to smack 115 pound doe the other day for the freezer. Uh, I hadn't been able to hunt that stand or even get out to it since last year, but I know it's a good spot just on location and, and geographical features in that area. Walked out there, dumped a half bag of corn that I carried out there, got lost on the way out there. He couldn't Tight. find it. You know, it was just one of those things. I was like, well, I'm already out here. Might as well just sit. And that's what I did. I just sat and hope for the best and sure shit deer up and moving, man. It's, it's, it's the rut. Even though it's, you know, people talk about the lockdown and people are having a hard time seeing deer. Deer still have to eat. They still have to drink, they still have to move. And, uh, if you know those geographical features, that's, that's what I took advantage of. You heard it here. If you go into the woods, you will kill a doe. Just go into the woods. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know why you haven't shot anything. Yeah. Uh, well, I've seen deer. I just haven't shot anything. I know. There was a, there were there were deer behind the two when I chose to shoot, but I didn't feel like letting those walk. And then it just being Yeah. So I was like, you know what, I Yeah. I, because my thing is is we're so busy. I don't I, I was like, I don't know if I'll get this opportunity again. And then I'm gonna sit, you know, into December, like like we found ourselves two two years in a row, stressing, trying to get some meat for the freezer. Thinking back to, you know, that one time I should have just shot. Because I don't know what's out there. Like, I have no idea if there's some buck, a big buck to target out there. I just want meat for the freezer. You know that I do not care about points. Like, these points here, you see how nice this deer is? We bought that on eBay. So, like, (laughs) Gus has a nice deer in his house. I I, I mean, there's one in mine, but it's... I I, I much prefer... I want meat. Yeah, I much prefer uh, a full freezer over things on my wall. The two deer that I have mounted were personal milestones that yeah. was my first buck and then my first archery deer that's the only thing that i've ever done uh, outside of that i just want meat for the freezer man I don't want, what i'm saying is i don't know why i'm waiting why i'm letting does uh, walk it's, it's something about getting up there and watching them and being like okay and sometimes, then you see another doe and you're like okay and sometimes then before it happens you know it, they're early, all gone. sometimes it happens early and i'm like I'm not ready for my hunt to be over. Yeah. Like that's what these are. These were full daylight. I would yeah, have had you know, time to still track and two get, and a half hours to sit, get out and it's daylight. And that's just like, I, I'm kind of, it's, it's quiet. I yeah. like it out here. I don't, I don't know if I want to do this yet. Yeah. It's good for my mental state. That's for sure. one of the main reasons I like hunting. But yeah, all that's getting ready to change. So yeah. I use this as a plug, like in the next couple of weeks, the postseason phase is going to start to to kick in depending on where you're at in the country. We have a second rut in South Carolina yeah. that, that, happens around uh, the first part of December. So things will be a little different down here, but in a lot of parts of the country, the late season phase will be kicking in and bucks are in, and deer are going to be changing food sources and things like that. So we'll, we'll talk about that another time. But um, I did have a funny story. I think every hunter that's hunted longer or, you know, longer than a year or two has had a situation where they've been in the, in the, in the stand and they've had to leave early because they had to take a shit. Mm-hmm. I've, it's happened to me. I've gotten down and just shit the bottom of the tree before. Mm-hmm. Um, so I took my, my little man, my, my youngest son hunting, you okay? Yeah. <laughs> I had to get it down. I hate that stuff so It's only much. his second time uh, coming out with me, and he was super excited. I, the night when I went and shot that, that doe uh, was the night before this, and I, you know, he overheard, uh, my, or my wife said, you know, Daddy's going hunting, and <gasps> he's going hunting, and he's running in my office. and said, can I go? And I was like, it just crushed my heart, because I knew the stand where I was going to. It's just, it's too deep in the woods. It's too far for me to, to drain. He's only, he just turned six. It just would not have been enjoyable trudging all the way back there i need to get him in a blind or somewhere it's a little more accessible um i said easier to ruin whatever yeah Yeah. however you want to put it you know it's like he's he's learning right it's about the experience you won't take him to a good spot uh, well i I, I don't want to take him somewhere where when he's like you know what i don't i think i'm ready it's not another it's not a 45 minute yeah hike through mosquitoes and because it was actually warm that night and it was just Anyways, make a long story short, we got about two hours into our sit, which I was proud of him because last time we sat last year, I think he he made it an hour, and he was like, "I don't think any deer coming out tonight, Dad. Let's go." Oh, yeah. You know? And so uh, we went out, and um, he's sitting. He's being very quiet. He he brought his iPad, but he actually turned it off himself and was standing up and he was looking and he was pointing out like where the deer might come out, and he was very engaged. And then um, he sat back down, which was weird because he had been like really engaged for like thirty minutes, and then he kind of pops up again. And he goes. I got to poop. And I was like, my man. Cool. I said, it happens, happens to all of us, buddy. I said, are you sure? 
He's like, I don't know. And I'm like, well, I said, here's the deal. Either you do and we can go or you don't and we can stay. But if you're, if you're telling me you don't and you do and you poop your pants, like, eh, this is going to be a not fun day. Yeah. It's like, there's more opportunities to hunt. I said, it's still early in the season enough for us to hunt some more. It's okay if, if, if you need to go to the bathroom. He was like, all right. So we packed up and he, we went back to the clubhouse and he, he tore it up, tore it up. But, um, we, we bumped deer on the way out walking of course out you did. and he was, he was bummed cause they were, he's like, where were those? Like, where, where were, were they? Right by the them. gate. Yeah. They were, you know where the field is and yeah. then the big plot, they're staging in that area. Like they always do. And yeah. they'll come in late through that, through that back right corner or they'll walk all the way back. Well, your um, pumpkins were untouched. If that makes you feel any better the day that I was out there. Oh, were they? Yeah. Yeah. I, I figured it was going to take them a little while to find it. Um, uh, but the, they'll, they'll stage and they'll, they'll follow that finger yeah. back behind there all the way to the feeder. And I'm pretty sure that's what they were doing. But I explained to him, like, hey, they were coming our way. We, we were doing the right thing and, you know, encouraged them. You know, we're doing the right thing. But I told him, I said, hey, everybody that hunts at some point or another has to get out of the stand and take a poop. Yeah, for so, sure. Just part of it. I jumped deer in that field on the way out, too. Oh, did you? It was dark, but yeah, yeah. they jumped right across me. The, where they cut down, they left that, lo- I don't know if it's a logging platform. Mm-hmm. They jumped right into there, which yep. I never thought of. That's an ankle breaker for a human. So I didn't think. For sure. That. Yeah, but that's where they went. Should I tell you about the BSE doe? Mm-mm. So it's no longer BSE, now it's WSE. And for <laughs> those that don't have a BSE, <laughs> best stand ever. It used to be. Lots of prominent deer have been har- killed there, right? Everybody sees well, stuff every, there. It, I've killed several deer in that it stand. It was named that because at one point that stand was in a different location, and it was a very, like, picturesque uh, over the bottom land with the with it was very it was it was a pretty setup uh, see, so it was I the best it was, stand ever okay. uh, i've not i've seen uh, one good buck there before uh, and shot a doe there as well as some other people i, got, I killed two deer there last year yeah so there's been plenty of deer right it is a good spot for sure so i parked kind of where the trail starts you mm-hmm. know and i hear like you know you get, what, everybody hears the hunts you hear squirrels and you're like squirrel or deer, you know, yeah. and you turn around, and you're like, oh, it's a squirrel. And then when you hear a deer, you're like, you freeze because you know you that's know not a, a squirrel. Right. But squirrels sound like deer until a deer sounds like a deer, if it makes sense. So I heard deer and I turn and look and that uh, where the entrance, the entrance there to my truck was probably six feet. She was standing in that six foot looking right at me. What? Yeah. And it's standing next to my truck looking at me because I just peeked around. It was this side. Yeah. I just turned and looked, and she was like, Nice truck, bro. Yeah. What's up? I like this trimmer. I saw you were here. <laughs> and then uh, she took off. That's a bummer. But I think that opening there, because I went and looked, there's a bunch of hoofs. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a bunch of trail marks. A little, tra- little trail they're yeah. using, game trail. So nice. I think that might be somewhere I look um, later on in the season. I've definitely, I, don't, I think my, my spots. I know exactly where they are. They're a little to the right and a little to the left. Where I'm at is like a crossway between, I think, two trails that they run. Yeah. So if I stay at the club another year, which I say every year. You just need to reposition that stand? Yeah, I'm going to go a little bit to the right. Yeah. Which makes it closer to actually where that road is, which nobody knows what we're talking about. But Weird. Yeah. Like where they plant all those like yeah. small stalks of corn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you listen to the podcast and you're in our hunt club, I just gave you. Some intel. Yeah. Exactly where they are. But yeah, there's um. What, Matt, were you gonna have him shoot, or he's just there to watch? Just there to watch. I yeah, brought yeah. the rifle. You know, unless something really significant walked out there, I, I don't know if uh, he's ready for that yet. It's one thing, you know, at that age when they say they want to go hunt, but I, I'm still introducing him and explaining to him kind of the realities of taking a life. I was hoping that maybe someone else would be hunting and would shoot a deer so we could see it. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'd like to maybe. Uh, you know, if if I can find a reason to head out to Cordray's, uh, well, when they call, um, when they call for to pick up my meat because I took the meat out to the processor, maybe bring him out there and let let him see the deer coming in, just expose him and kind of let him see what that is. You know, the yeah. d- death is a real thing, and it's it's a lot for a kid that age to try and comprehend for when sure. he's watching all of these t- cartoons and TV shows that uh, it's called anthropomorphization, where you put human features and characteristics characteristics to animals you know, that's that gets projected on kids and then yeah. they, they're not they they have a hard time disassociating that that they're not uh, and, people and the realities that they, they don't really talk they don't really have the same kind of 
feelings and emotions that we do. So it's, it's tricky with kids and I'm just, there's no, there's no, I don't, that as far as I'm aware, there's no guidebook on how to do it the right or wrong way. So I'm just doing the best I can. Well, let me, let me ask you this then. The, as a, as a father for hunting. So you take someone hunting, do you mm-hmm. want them to kill a massive buck their first time? Cause I, I see a lot on social media that people are like, Oh, my son got his first buck and it's like this, or my his first deer. And it's this big, like 10 point. Mm-hmm. Or do you think they should start with a doe and work their way up? I think they should. I think he should shoot whatever he wants to. His first okay. deer. I think, yeah, I think whenever, whenever he is ready to take it, to take an animal, when, when he decides that he's ready to take the life of another animal and bear that, the burden of, that process to get nutrient, you know, that's, that's yeah, the whole yeah. thing I'm yeah, teaching. I know, right? I know. I just meant as but, far as well, what whenever animal. he does make that decision, I don't, if he sees a buck and he's like, I want to shoot a bigger one. Okay. But if he decides that spike is the first deer he wants to kill and that's what, that's yeah. what he wants to do, then we're going to have at it and let him do it. I just always seen it as like, it would suck if your first buck was like a monster you'll oh, yeah. never see again. Dude, yeah, sometimes I that see that. That was my point. Not you see like these 12-year-old kids who are like their first buck and it's a 14 point, yeah. 190 whatever. Yeah. And it's just like, buddy, I hope you soak that in and get that thing shoulder mounted. <laughs> this is not going to happen again. That, well, I mean, it might, depending <laughs> on where you live. There's places in certain parts of the country where that, I guess that's more frequent, but not around here. Yeah, I think I'd be like, if this is your first time hunting, you should start with a doe. Get comfortable with the process. Sure. And then... That's what move the, up the, the, the couple of instances that, uh, Gavin has had an opportunity to try and take, it's been mostly does. Um, and he's okay with that. I think yeah, that's, I would that's be his choice. I, we're going to get out more this year. He's ready to hunt with the rifle. The weather's cooling off. Uh, it's just no fun for them taking him out there when it's hot and yeah, sweaty sure. and disgusting. They're not but, into it enough for them to be okay with it. No, I don't, I don't think, I think Gavin's getting to that point now, you know, he'll be 16 next year. He can start hunting by himself actually. So yeah. It's, I'm, I'm going to get him a rifle possibly this year, um, and get him comfortable, you know, carrying it and, and doing a lot of stuff himself. He operates them just fine safely, but I want him to have, have his own. Yeah. Um, I think about that with whiskey too. Like if you, the first whiskey you give someone is, you know, insert your favorite whiskey. Like a really high quality kind yeah. of. Just kind something of that's like really good. It's got a good <laughs> reputation to it. A lot of people like it and then, and then they drink it and then it's like, they're like, I like that. And then they never like anything else because it's not that. <laughs> I don't know. There's a lot of whiskey out there. Like, we started out cheap. So, to us, good whiskey is really good. That's true. That is true. Yeah. We'll get in. We should tell the... We should tell the garage story one day. The, the lawnmower racing story. Someday. Someday. We will. Or maybe do it at Patreon only. <laughs> What's funny is how close... Yeah. How close you and I have both come to being in real, real serious pain trouble. No, like the, everything we talked about is a joke in that garage with the lawnmower and racing lawnmowers and, yeah. and, and you know, neighbors. Like the reality of that is not so far <laughs> removed. I think you may remember it better than I do. Oh, I do. Yeah, I don't. I remember hitting my head, or you hit your head. Somebody hit oh, their I hit, head. I hit, I hit the shit out of my head. Yeah, yeah. But there was a there was a funny conversation that took place. Mm, you have to refresh I, me. I shall offline. All right, all right. Let's get into this. So I wrote. I went and spent some time, and I did this all on my phone, snipping clips, and it's real fun. So this is in reference to last episode. Just in case you didn't hear it, we talked about deer testing positive for COVID, and we just kind of like brushed the surface. Uh, we didn't really. We just gave you some things to go look at. Yeah. Um, and it's mainly because I, w- I had heard of it, but I hadn't actually looked at it. So I didn't understand the full aspect of the thing. And so I've been asked to go over it. So I, and I was also curious, so I went over it as well. So this was the point. And this is another thing about how we talk about people over exaggerate or, or um, blow stuff out of proportion or whatever. So the, this, is, this is the reason this is news is because every single episode that I clipped, I don't know how much of the thing I clipped, but every single one, they talk about this week is opening whitetail season, and guess what? They have COVID. That's the way they all started. So it's only news right now because this test was done a while ago. So it's only news right now because there's the Midwest is opening. So that's why it's coming out. So they're saying it's here to have COVID. We discuss go do a mighty come of research on how they test and come with your own decision. However, I don't want to talk about any of that. I'm going to talk about this. 
This is the AHS, the Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service. They did 481 samples of deer. So the number you'll keep hearing is 67%. 67% of whitetail have it. So they keep saying. It's of that. So I have it all written down. So okay. it's 67%. They keep saying 67%. 67%. So it, we always, we've joked before about lying with statistics and how you can, you can pick. It's happened multiple times where there's a study done in this small town and 10 out of 15 people in this town are alcoholics. And they say, yeah. 10 out of 15 Americans are alcoholics. You know, it's like, well, no, it's a small town. It's not a huge pull. But yeah. the statistic is true. They're just lying to you. Right. So lying with statistics. So out of the 481 samples, there was 101 done in Illinois, 70 or 7 percent. Yeah, 101 were done in Illinois, 7 percent tested positive for the COVID antibody. Then Michigan or New York, there were 68 samples, 19 percent tested positive. In Pennsylvania, there's 199 samples, 31 percent tested positive. And then this is the one they keep quoting: Michigan, there was 113 samples that were taken. And 67% of those deer had co- had COVID. So all those are results, and this is uh, copy and paste. Although the results indicate that certain white-tailed deer populations in the United States were exposed to SARS-CoV-2, they should not be extrapolated to represent the prevalence of SARS-CoV-2 antibodies in the deer population as a whole. They say it in the article. Say it again. Although the results indicate that certain white-tailed deer populations in these states were exposed to SARS-CoV-2, mm-hmm. they should not be extrapolated to represent the prevalence of SARS-CoV-2 antibodies in the deer population as a whole. All right? That's what the actual article all these people are citing. That's what it says. Here's one of the questions on there. and They, they did like, we already know people are going to ask this question, so, so we'll ask it and answer, answer it. Answer yeah. Do deer show clinical signs of illness? Yeah, you ever see him line up around the uh, the block at the uh, urgent care with <laughs> cough? Because I'm thinking like you would think people like deer are dropping dead from COVID. So then you talk about certain radio personalities or whoever, and they say things like it's only affecting people that are, you know, pre whatever. We're not getting into that, but you know what I'm talking about. So here's what it says: This was not the focus of our study. However, there were there's no meaning zero definitive none reports of clinical illness associated with SARS-CoV-2 in the deer populations we surveyed and clinical signs of SARS-CoV-2 have not been observed in the wild white-tailed deer. In addition, captive deer experimentally infected with SARS-CoV-2 as part of a USD agricultural research project. So they're capturing deer and giving them COVID, but there's zero, not one case of a sick COVID deer. Mm. Is hunter harvested game meat safe to eat? Here's the answer. There is no zero. I'm being. Ex- I'm saying that on purpose. There's none zero evidence that people can get COVID nineteen by preparing or eating meat from an animal infected with SARS CoV two, including wild game meat hunted in the United States. So now that we have read the article, that all of these news things have come out, and we've been seeing people say you should wear a mask while skinning your deer. Well, I, I have. I developed something on the fly. Right now, first ever prototype draw up of a mask to put on the deer oh, that you cool. harvest so that you don't have to wear a mask. There you go. You just put the because mask the on mask them. works. Yeah, if you just That's put the good... mask on the deer, it's basically the same thing. It's just yep. it's like a muzzle. Snap a picture of that, send it to me, and I'll throw it in the video. Yeah, let's do that. I'm going to add some stuff to it, maybe some flowers or. Yeah, that's fine. Got to make it pretty camo. so it matches their outfit. Maybe I should blaze orange so they put some, put some white they don't on get it. accidentally shot. Well, you want them to look good. <laughs> functionality does not matter. You need them to look good in their mask. Otherwise, they won't wear it. This has been proven. All right. All right. Clip number one. Oh, this is going to get good. I'm excited. So just remember everything I just told you. All right. So clip and pro- number and props one. props to Matt for going down this rabbit hole because I, got I opted not to because it was annoying, and, and he pushed through it and did it anyway. So this is 40 seconds. I'm pretty sure I've proofed all of these. There's one that's longer than this that we just have to listen to the whole thing. But now remember that I said no, none, zero. Not that no, you didn't say that. The article, the article said, said that. Right. Yes. I'm reading the it article from the article. They're citing. So if what's the difference between no, none, zero, definitively none, and maybe? What does maybe mean? Do you know what maybe means? It's a possibility. Right. Which means nothing. That's not a scientific term. Maybe. True. It's not. 
it's maybe, not a scientific term. Like, could you say is maybe this is wood? Yeah. No, because this is wood. This is wood. Yeah. Maybe this is metal. No, because this is metal. So maybe, as far as no, 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 does not mean anything. There's right? just too many uncertain variables to come up with a definitive it means answer. I have no idea. I mean, I don't <laughs> fucking. I have not a clue. Maybe, you know. Are you going to die before you hit fifty? Maybe. It's going to be the title of this episode. Maybe. So I'm going to read. All right. Let's let this play. Of course, live in herds, and they interact with one another in a herd mentality. He says there hasn't been any evidence of deer transmitting the virus back to humans. We do not know how extensive this uh, problem may be, may be in Texas deer. We just don't know. But says just be aware and maybe wear a mask. I think it would be prudent to be careful when you're field dressing your deer, you know, gutting it and cleaning it and so forth, just to be aware that there could be a problem here. Texas Parks and Wildlife says they are not. Okay, so that was clip one. So we're off that one. Clip two. All right, they, this is the way they say this. So this one I have to pause as we go through it. But in case I forget, so the USDA took small sample a small sample of 481 deer across four different states, which is what they're, they are saying here, which is the exact same thing that they got from the article, which is what I got. So they took a small sample, 481 deer across a different, across four different states. And then they say millions of white-tailed deer roam the state carrying the disease, carrying diseases, and now COVID. That's very, I mean, that implies a lot. It implies a lot. So this is, this is the longer clip. Out, the organization is still working to figure out how. Whitney? Emily, the USDA took a really small sample of 481 deer Oops, sorry. across four different states. Of those, the most significant number of positive tests was right here in Michigan. Millions of white-tailed deer currently roam the state, known to carry things like chronic wasting disease, mange, and now COVID-19. We currently really do not know the implications. So before I, I keep going, so this guy... The only reason I'm going to let this keep playing is because he says, um, we don't know the current expectations, 67% positive in Michigan. So how does this impact, right? So then he says they got it from people, services, feed, and other animals, which we've discussed, before, which is common knowledge now that you cannot get it from services. But the reason I'm going to let this keep playing is because you say, um, less than he does. Of, of <laughs> this asshole. initial look, right? We need Dr. Thomas DiLiberto works with APHIS Wildlife like Services at the USDA. After learning the deer could catch COVID-19, the team launched this study, finding COVID antibodies in different populations of white-tailed deer in Illinois, Pennsylvania, <laughs> New York, and Michigan. Here in our state, they gathered 113 samples. Of those, 67% tested positive for SARS-CoV-2 antibodies, meaning they likely had COVID-19 at likely. some point. But these numbers don't necessarily reflect how big the problem is. If we wanted to talk about how many deer or the percent of deer in the entire state were infected, we would have to collect a larger sample size right. over a much broader distribution across the state. Right. So you cannot. The study now right. raising more questions and answers, like how does this impact humans and where did the deer get the virus? DiLiberto suspects it could be from people, surfaces, feed, or other animals. It's likely that it's not through one route. That was the other thing I wanted to say. It likely. Maybe likely, likely it's possible. Possible. A lot of things possible. Here, here, here we thing, go again. The one thing that she said that always bugs me is uh, when they say that leaves leaves questions or or it's unsure how big the problem actually yeah. is. It's also unclear how, how small, how not <laughs> how not a problem it is. Also, well, you're just also choosing the study which says it's, it's not a problem. The study <laughs> says it's not killing right. them, and you can't get it from them. Therefore, it is not, <laughs> not a problem. A problem. <laughs> Because we found exposure in deer across four states over a really broad geographic range. Now it's broad. Um, geographic both range. within each state and, and across the four states, it's likely that exposure is happening in several or many different ways. Despite the finding, the USDA. Uh, here we go. No evidence that um, people can get um, SARS-CoV-2 from eating food, whether that's um, uh, normal, um, f uh, you know, livestock or whether it's game hunted wild meat. There's no so evidence. So there's no evidence that you can get any of it. I have a point here. All right. The so no evidence hunters can get it from deer. So mm, can I, 
No evidence can be passed. Oh, this clip was just for fun. Clip number four. So on my uncle's land, he has about 30 acres out there. And uh, just being out there with the boys and... Uh, being out there with the boys? He was talking about his kids, but I was going to use it out of context. You should. <laughs> so he was talking about being out with the boys. All right. So this is the last part, I think. He says it never hurts to keep yourself protected. If you're out hunting, make sure you're wearing your proper PPE. If you're out in nature, make sure that you're enjoying nature, but then also coming in and protecting yourself by washing your hands. And if you have... Did I clip that wrong? said, if you have pets, I clipped it wrong. If you have pets, when they come inside from outside, make sure you wash your don't hands and don't pet them. And don't pet them? Yeah, don't touch the pets because they were outside where the COVID is and the deer. Don't touch your dog. Definitely don't touch anything that has been outside. Just go inside, stay on your phone, buy stuff, and make yourself happy. That's what I wrote. That was my closing yeah. argument. Do not go outside. Don't spend any time out there at all. Don't touch anything that's been outside. Get on Amazon and buy stuff. Just sit on your ass. Yep. Don't exercise. Nope. Don't eat healthy. Don't get vitamin D. You can eat healthy. Just make sure it hasn't been outside because it's in food now and deer. I don't know. So I don't know if that's what y'all wanted us to do, but that's why I was saying you want more info on it. There's more info on it. There's everything I can tell you from the truth in the beginning to now we're getting a little satire in the end. But that's how this podcast works. If you want us to research something, that's how you do research. It's fun. Yeah, it's fun. Jump to your own conclusions. We're all about it. So, <laughs> next week is Thanksgiving. I wanted to remind folks that while you're out shopping for your ham or turkey, whatever the hell you eat, that is not what they ate at Thanksgiving. Oh, uh, please tell. Research based on what was available and time appropriate. Uh, or time period appropriate foods suggests that they would almost have certainly eaten venison. Yeah. And pigs. And pigs. So So I you, guess they did have ham, but venison. Get you some pork, and get you some ham, and get you some venison if you don't have any. Yeah. And do a Thanksgiving properly. Yeah, definitely venison for Thanksgiving. Are you gonna eat venison for Thanksgiving? Probably. Can I get it? Can I bum a shoulder? <laughs> bum a shoulder? Yeah, I got it. I got it. I got it. So I actually, it's funny, the, um, I can never remember her name, the sweet lady that, that, um, Miss Cordray, she was, she was taking my order and in my mind, I wanted just one shoulder and one, uh, roast. Yeah. The tenderloins, loin roasts, and then everything else, burger. As you know, the shoulder is kind of small by itself. Yeah. So I, when I asked for one, she made like a funny, like micro expression. And I was like, I mean, I'm sorry, both shoulders. And she was like, like, what kind of idiot just gets one? Yeah. I was like, oh, lesson learned. Don't do that again. <laughs> yeah, well, it's because every cut you do, they're like, because they're paid by the cut, right? So yeah. if, if you're like, but it's also, they want you to do two, like, slim it down. Let's get like three or four cuts out of this. You start getting real intricate. That's a lot of time spent on one customer. Yeah. That's unreasonable. She seemed pretty happy with what I ordered. I mean, it was it's yeah. it should be easy to do just the big cuts and then whatever's left over, grind it up and give me some hamburger. That's all I did. What's fun in there is to listen to them talk to people about cuts. Like even like people you would expect would know mm -hmm. cuts of meat. And they come in and they're like, So what's uh what's the how do you make the bacon? She's like, Sir, there's ten people behind you in line. Yeah. <laughs> you know, feel free to come back on a Monday morning and we'll discuss how we make stuff. But until then, <laughs> she's never said that but you can see it in her face like she's yeah, very yeah. nice everybody there's very nice mm -hmm. they have a reputation for being good people yeah that i brought in when i brought that dough in there was a young lady a couple trucks down who her whole family showed up her she went hunting with her grandpa and her brother and she shot her first buck i think uh, it was nice. her first deer and but like her dad and other brothers and aunts and like every like the 15 people showed up and they were doing pictures and everything. So it was taking a while to get to me. And Mr. Cordray walked up and patted me on the shoulder and said, Hey, thanks for your patience. I said, so I'm in no rush. I said, this is what, this is what hunting's all about. I said, I, I, I'm just as happy watching as if it was my own kid. And uh, we sat and, and chit chatted for a little bit. I told him, uh, how much I enjoyed the, the share, the beef share and everything like that. Oh, you did tell him? Yeah. Dude, I had it again last night. Good stuff, huh? <laughs> yeah. Making a roast with it. It's like, normally when you make a roast, like store bought, if you get like grain fed beef and then switch to grass fed, like yeah. naturally they can roam around and do whatever they want. When you switch to that, the and you make the 
Oh, man. Mississippi pot roast? Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yep. Usually there's like, because you put no water in there. It's just the roast, uh, au jus, and ranch packets and yep. butter. And that's it. And you turn it on. Usually there's like this much liquid on the bottom. Yep. The one I made yesterday, it was like three inches of fat yeah. in there. And it's, man, Do you, it's do you put banana peppers in yours? Yeah, of course. Yeah. And a little, I do a little bit of banana pepper juice. Yep. Yeah. So good. That's all I do though. That's it. It's really easy. We just we just had it this last week. Yeah, I love it. It's very easy. It smells good. I made it. For, I made it with broccoli florets, and then tonight I'm going to do it again with um, the zucchini noodles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The spiral mm -hmm. things. So I'm going to do that with that and some kind of like probably a whiskey brown glaze sauce or something. Mm, sounds fancy. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really good. Oh, I had something else. Playlist. I heard this on the BS and Booze podcast. They made a playlist for the podcast. Like a Spotify playlist or what? I don't know. I, I didn't really. Okay. I'm, I just heard it when I was getting on the truck. But what you're listening, we're, it's coming. We're, gonna, we're trying to get the Wi-Fi thing figured out, and then we'll, we'll do an event. But the I wanted nothing to do with that because I don't know what they're talking about yet. But I need a new just overall playlist. So we would like... If you would tell us some songs that you like, some artists that you like that maybe we don't know. I listen to a lot of country. I listen to a lot of 90s. And uh, I do dabble in the hip-hop. The only thing I don't like is jazz. I'm not a – I like, like, R&B. Do you like blues? Yeah, I love blues. Okay. I so, listen to more blues country than just – like, I don't listen to pop country. Yeah. Unless, you know, we're drinking and then one of those songs. Well, it's just sometimes jazz and blues will – Depending on what you're listening to and a certain... Yeah, yeah. I don't know. like heavy saxophone. Yeah, you don't want like... I just don't like saxophone. Or people that play them. <laughs> I played the saxophone, I know. asshole. <laughs> I don't know where. For many years. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's... that's a, That sounds good. I'm always down for new music. Yeah, so tell us some new music. And then we, we might also put together just kind of like some of our favorite bands. Man, we're going to be in there. for a treat. Yeah. <laughs> no, gonna, we are all over the place. Yeah, we are. There's uh, a lot. We, we still listen to, I mean, heavy metal... Um, I listen to some stuff that would probably make my grandmother disown me. Oh yeah, for sure. I definitely listen to stuff that my grandparents would not be happy with. <laughs> Just yeah, yeah. Good All right. stuff. So this episode, uh, we had number eight, Pure Kentucky beat Will It Pot Still. Will It Pot Still and Pot uh, Pure Kentucky went back on the shelf. Welcome back to the family. And then the Pot Still. Is going on to a finale round that we will probably do all on its own. And then we'll clip each of these podcasts with the episode in there. And then we'll make a final video showing that the cigar video, we have forgot to mention it. No, we did mention it. I just didn't go into detail. I believe that we're going to sit down and go through all of the content together and then formulate how we want to do it. I have tried to keep in into like who sent what and then I'll have yeah. Trevor help but I think we're going to mention names in the podcast there were several people that said they didn't want their name mentioned so if that was you and you listen tell us now otherwise we're going to mention your name because I don't remember um yes so all the cigars are finally gone except for like a handful that we're saving for they're the ones that we were told uh, only give these to like cigar aficionados and I guess they don't go bad so we're going to leave them in the humidor and then when we find a veteran aficionado they will get them. One's the singer. Um, one oh, was yeah. that real long one. <laughs> that was cool. So there's a, there's a few of them in there. Yes. And if you want to buy cigars, we already said it. Small batch cigar. Whiskey and White Tail Starter Pack is in there. It's very cool. We are now repeating ourselves, and I believe... It's a good, sh a good sign. That we're done, yeah. Yeah. So we will continue on the day and do stuff. Oh, and orders are coming in. Yeah. Each day, every other day, it's like an exponential thing where it's last week, we had like, oh no. And then this week, it's almost double already what we had last week. And then I'm afraid like next week's going to be double that. I think Friday, I think tomorrow, we're going to see because it's like one of the first and 15th deals. Or oh, yeah, that's right. Well, tomorrow. Tomorrow's yeah. the 20th. So people are already paid. But I don't know. Maybe they're waiting till Friday. I don't know. We'll see. Depends on the company. I know December 1st last year was brutal. <laughs> Bananas. So I think it'll be the same this year. But the orders are coming again. We are still shipping on time. All that stuff. The post office, I haven't noticed a huge delay. It's still, we're still between two to three days for delivery. 
So that's good. Perfect. Keeping you up to date on your shipping Christmas stuff. All right. So cheers to Pure Kentucky and episode whatever this is, 48 complete. I still just don't like it. But it goes on. Until next time. Yep. Hit that button. Bing.